what we had shown a couple years ago on efforts we did at the VIS was that we could develop synthetic biology-based sensors to detect viral pathogens such as Ebola. In this case, we took that platform and now developed several dozen sensors that could be used to detect Zika in a very rapid and inexpensive manner. We took on the Zika challenge largely because of the growing global health crisis. Increasingly, we're seeing reports in the media and the call for new technologies. We have a synthetic biology platform for rapid, cheap diagnostics that was remarkably well-suited to take on this crisis. So Zika virus is an RNA virus, which basically means that its genome that it's carrying around inside has RNA in it. The idea is that we create RNA-based sensor, and then you hydrate it with a sample, and then depending on if Zika virus is present or not, then there's a color change, and you can easily see it with the naked eye. The standard way to diagnose these kinds of viruses is an antibody-based method. The one problem is that the antibodies that you get once you get Zika virus are very similar to the ones that you get for dengue. The nice thing about our method is that it's a sequence-based method. We initially looked at sequences of the Zika virus from the field. We could actually identify regions of the RNA genome that lent themselves to the RNA-based sensors that we've developed in the context of our synthetic biology platform. We then went the next step and uh, developed a whole workflow, figuring out how you could process patient samples. First of all, you start with a patient sample, and then you amplify it. That creates many, many copies of a small part of the Zika genome. The concentration of the virus in the blood is very, very low. By doing an amplification step where you're going to try to just increase the number of RNA molecules, it now makes it easier to actually detect the presence of such RNA and get a measurable readout where you could, for example, in our paper-based scheme, see a change in color. We use this uh, amplified RNA, put it on paper and test whether the virus is present or not. Typically within 30 minutes to an hour, you can start seeing a color change on the paper. But if a more precise measurement needs to be made, we can also transfer this paper under an electronic reader that can take uh, very precise measurements, can more efficiently diagnose Zika. As part of this project, in addition to direct detection, we also developed a platform that allows us to discriminate between different strains of the virus. Differences between the RNA sequences of the different strains tend to be very, very small. What the CRISPR system allows us to do is to distinguish between those very small differences. So you can discriminate to identify is it an African strain or is it an American strain or an Asian strain. The broader implications of what we have here, whether it's for Zika or Ebola or other viral and bacterial infections, is that we have now a platform that allows you to rapidly develop new sensors for new outbreaks. We anticipate that this platform would enable one to actually develop, test, validate, and deploy a new diagnostic in under a week.